um, interested in trying to come to an agreement on uh, the sort of goals and who this would be benefiting and who the audience is for this work before we would consider uh, how to actually, uh, you know, what sort of doc, what type of document it would uh, come out as. So I have a list of a couple of um, like possible goals that we could address with this kind of work. Um, I'd be curious to hear from others about um, what what they see is needed uh, in terms of like what are the what are the current issues that you are facing with the existing state of things as you are you know talking to people and working with with people who are using the specs. Uh, that's a good idea to maybe focus on the problem statement first or like and, and what audience presumably that's part of the problem statement we are trying to reach out to what, what, is, so, what is your uh, take on that problem statement yeah so the the challenges that i'm seeing when i'm talking to people working with people who are building um building systems i'm Primarily working with people who are building applications as well as uh, like client applications as well as resource servers. Um, obviously, as as you know, Okta. I work at Okta, and Okta provides an authorization server. So we don't typically work with people who are building authorization servers. We're building. We're working with people who are building resource servers and client applications. So they're really looking for understanding how to architect um, the different parts of their system and how that maps to OAuth. So that's what I'm trying to. To communicate and then um, as part of that you know there's a lot of questions about well if they're at all familiar with reading some of the specs they don't necessarily see how these different pieces fit together or what the latest recommendations are doing to like what the implications are for their work um, so yeah my one of the things that i'm hoping to accomplish with this is to um, really reduce the amount of different things that they have to read or, or uh, you know, reducing the amount of um, things that are read that they read that are then sort of overridden by later things. So as someone's going through uh, the spec, there's a lot of things in all the documents that later become obsolete by later documents or just uh, clarified better in later documents where some of the optional things become required, things like that. Uh, but yeah, the primary audiences for the that I'm trying to address are these, uh, you know, developers of um, resource servers and and client applications. Aaron, yes, update here. Would these people are they really going and looking? I'm just wondering how many of them are actually going out and looking at the specs versus reading, you know, any of the great write-ups on what to do what you know you guys have some great write-ups on your site as do other vendors in the space yeah no it's with, definitely a fair the, question yeah because it um, seems like you would just point them it's like well here's here's the write-up that condenses it all down and would also help them with information that's specific to your offering that you know obviously would not be in the specifications Sure. So what I typically see is that people definitely start with that, um, you know, more easily discoverable, uh, higher level summary version of of the documents of, you know, whether that's the books or blog posts or whatever it is. But then as people start to get into the specifics of it and when there's when they start making making decisions about um, like their own architecture in terms of the different token validation methods or things like that, uh, that's where people start then diving in, like finding the specs and then pointing to paragraphs and being like, well, this says this, why, why does it work this way? Or why don't you do this? And that kind of thing. Um, cause also frankly, like, because there's so many different ways you can build an authorization server and still be technically OAuth two, um, a lot of the things that are in the specs don't necessarily reflect the way that any given authorization server, authorization server works. So there's that sort of, um, that disconnect of people are finding are, are referencing the specs because they are looking for the sort of source of truth and then wondering well why doesn't that match what's you know in the real world well this problem won't really be solved by piling on uh, another layer to say that uh, people will still uh, uh, like the thing that you just said uh, which uh, 
of does not guarantee interop is absolutely true, will remain true even if you aggregate uh, and uh, you put together the latest and greatest. Like, uh, unless you start producing profiles, uh, this problem will not go away. Yeah, just listen to that, Aaron. There's there's some choices, but, you know, potentially part of the challenge is there's, there's choices that you guys have made at Okta that make sense for you. And what I'm hearing is that the customer goes and read something in the spec and says, but I want to go and do X. And you guys say, well, we don't do X. And they're like, but, but that's how I want to do X. Um, and so X actually may be a valid path, but for you know a variety of reasons, you guys aren't supporting that. So are, what are you saying is that a new document that's a standard would address those types of questions? Um, I guess it's, go ahead. I, I was just gonna jump in because that's that's not really what I'm hearing um, is that this would be like anything provider specific. This, uh, and this was a big part of the side conversation is that this would be trying to capture the group has largely considered to be best practice um, because you've already we've already got documents uh, like you know Torsten's uh, security document, the new one, um, that are saying to do things in a certain way and to not do things that are technically allowed but cause problems and to not do them for specific reasons. So this isn't just I'm, I am not hearing this at all as Okta just wanting to have their practices standardized, um, but more along the lines of have one document that says, follow this and you're doing all of the best practices without having to read other things. Yeah, thanks, that's, that's yeah. much no, better I, said. I, I, yeah, I wasn't, wasn't in trying to insinuate that Okta was trying to say that the standard should be something that's Okta specific. I was digging more into what the problem is of going from what the customer confusion is. And it seemed, and maybe I misheard what you're saying here. And part of it was, is they look at what you're offering and then they see things in the spec that are different than what you're offering and they're confused. And so the, the difference could be, those are some choices around how to implement, which I think is part of what Victoria was getting at is that there are choices around what to do and since it's a framework there's a number of different choices and so one area of confusion is choices that Okta made about what to implement and the other area of confusion it can be uh, choices that Okta has made because that's the best security practice which would be common for everybody so of those two problems is one more prevalent or is one only one of those exist well, so I don't want to make this all about Okta either. Like, absolutely not. Like, this is I'm 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 definitely trying to come at this from you know with everybody in mind and from the standards point of view. So, um, sorry, I was I'm not trying to do that. I'm just I I find it useful to dig into. You, know, you have customers that have a problem, so let's really understand what the problem is to make sure that what we deliver solves that problem, right? And so it, it could be that it's better Okta documentation, or it could be that there's, I understand the proposal. I'm just wanting to make sure that it actually solves what the problem is. Yeah, well, and I think there's there's a couple of different problems here that are sort of all bubbling up at the same time. So there's a couple of different angles to it. And the other part of it is when someone, um, you know, when someone picks up a uh, a library or looks or looks at a different authorization server, um, you know, evaluating three different open source authorization servers, and they're all labeled OAuth2. It turns out that that's actually like almost meaningless at this point because there's so many different ways it could work. When in reality, what this group is doing is actually, especially with the latest security VCP, is actually documenting a relatively restricted profile of what was published in 2012. So I think that's also the the, one of my other goals here is that we, in reality, this group is saying here is a more secure way to be doing this overall. And it would be nice if there was a label for that so that when there is code published, either, you know, anything from a product that's a company sells to an open source library to an open source product or whatever, we can capture that and say like, yeah, this does actually follow the latest recommendations that this group has published. So basically, you are uh, say, you are saying that uh, 
uh, the BCP says uh, should be stated more strongly. Like, uh, in the end, uh, you're right that the BCP restricts the, the core, but uh, I think that it still uh, retains a lot of freedom. That's to say that uh, even if people follow the BCP, uh, they're still going to be able to do non-interoperable uh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally, and that's fine. I just, there's just, a, you know, there's still a lot of things in there that are, uh, are concrete and are more limited than the original. It sounds like, sounds like part of what you're saying is that the telling people that we follow the BCP is kind of a weak label, a way of describing it, right? And that people say it's OAuth two. And so part of, uh, as I listen to it, if you call it OAuth two dot one, it's clear at, at a high level label that something being two dot one follows the BCP. Yeah, exactly. So, and one of the examples of this that I'm seeing already happening is people are updating um, servers or client libraries to support OAuth 2 with Pixie for single page apps. Like that, and that's a whole long label that they're now like documenting as pull requests or opening issues against to request people, you know, support authorization code plus Pixie for this use case, which is something that's in the security BCP, right? I would like to add my my perspective on that, Torsten speaking. Um, first of all, on interoperability. Um, the, the security PCP, as the name suggests, is about security, and we invested a tremendous time to come up with a conclusion how we think OAuth should be used in a secure fashion. It took us five years or so. What I have observed in the market is that um, people are not really aware of the PCP. Um, if they if they uh, search for specification and they will end up with RFC 6749. And what I would like to ensure is that anyone that um, is searching for the OAuth specification will somehow come across this new rules, this new profile. So from my perspective, the best way would be to come up with an update for RFC 6749, or at least some annotation in the RFC that tells here are new rules you should follow those rules because that's what the OAuth uh, working group came up with. That's that's my my primary uh, my primary uh, interest because what I have I have seen in the in the last couple of years when I was working with open banking initiatives, they do not know any other specification besides RFC sixty seven forty nine. That's that's a real and big problem from my perspective. And I, I said I said in the in the uh, in the site meeting in, in Singapore. From my perspective, I am really satisfied and uh, uh, happy once uh, we do not need uh, security BCP any longer. So uh, I, I would like to see the, all the rules and the, the more precise uh, um, 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 guidelines how to use uh, OAuth securely to be rolled up in, in, in a new RFC or an update for RFC 6749. That would be that would make me really happy. Thanks. Yeah, and I think that really gets to the point of, um, I think it really gets to the core of it, which is that right now when people look for OAuth, they do find 6749 and it's very hard to find the rest of it. You have to know how to navigate IETF space. You have to know what a working group is. A lot of people don't even realize there is one. They just think it's all IETF. And you have to really know how to find all of the documents that come after that in order to end up at the security BCP, for example. So I think that's, uh, yeah, I think it's a great summary of the problem. And um, we could also use that to make the specification simpler because we just removed a lot of functionality. Are there any counter arguments? Change with spec. Huh? I think that uh, there's, uh, there's many. Let's say that uh, we know it's going to be very, very expensive to change the core. I think that uh, Torsen suggested uh, uh, something that might be a great compromise, which is uh, to have uh, references to the BCP directly from the, from the core spec so that the discoverability problem is solved. But uh, uh, if we were to uh, try to actually update the spec, I think that it would take quite a long time because uh, the restrictions that we are doing for security reasons are valid, but uh, at the same time, uh, I think that there might be situations in which people uh, 
have a mitigating circumstances which cannot be generalized, but they do apply to that specific case. And taking that choice away from them is going to be hard. And I think it's possible, but uh, it will lead to a lot of discussion. So I think that uh, we might end up doing a lot of work and ultimately uh, we might achieve uh, basically the same just by having an explicit reference to the BCP from the RFC. Strictly speaking, my tech from MITRE, I wanted to chime in. We've been spending a lot of time profiling the use of OAuth for large enterprise environments. So, writing down what requirements we expect ASs and clients and resource servers to be in the right cert. Obviously, pointing at RFC 6749 isn't sufficient. And I think the working group's already done most or all of the hard work of writing down what's expected. It's just littered across a whole bunch of documents. And certainly if OAuth could be updated to a 2.1 that incorporates all of that and we can go out there and say, hey, we expect these products that we're purchasing, developing, whatever to meet the OAuth 2.1 requirements, I think that would make our lives uh, a lot easier. Could you say, could you say again, um, like, I'm trying to write down some notes. Uh, what would make your life easier, easier if we have, uh, I think this was Michael. Yeah, so having a, having a single OAuth 2.1 RFC to point to that incorporates all the great work the working groups done. So in the, in the new security BCP draft, but also other. BCPs like the native apps work, uh, mutual TLS, uh, the JWT access token specification. Because, uh, right, it's, it, we're trying to put out requirements for um, either product picture, man, uh, product development, whatever of, of what products are expected to me. Obviously, OAuth 2.0 as it is in the RFC 6749 isn't sufficient. I'm trying to point at all these other uh, working groups documents for for what to do it makes things very complicated so right if, if there were one preferably ITS plus document that, that conveyed all these um, conveyed the um, most up-to-date consensus on what to do on um, both for those procurement reasons um, for someone to point to and if, like if we could go to a vendor or we're developing something or whatever and say this is OAuth 2.1 compliant and, and have some sort of common definition of what that means, that would just be a huge help. So you brought up a couple of other topics. Um, and one is the scope of what, or Dick, did you want to respond to that? Yeah, I think what he's saying is that he doesn't want to list, oh, it's OAuth 2 with the BCP and Pixie and JWT. Like there's a whole, uh, large list of things, which makes it hard for people to understand. And so I think that, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, is that you want a crisp answer of saying, we would like something that's OAuth 2.1 compliant. And everybody knows what that means because there's a document about that. Yeah, exactly. I think there'd still be a debate to have of how much text would be duplicated in said document versus that one document just pointing at other things. Um, at the very least, it'd be nice if it removed all the things in OAuth 2.0 that, that we don't think are acceptable to do anymore. And then if it referred to other documents and said, here, you should do Pixie, it's described here, um, et, et cetera, that, that, I, I think that would be fine versus just duplicating all the text. That there's yeah it's more around that crisp label of what it is that goes to a document that maybe points to a bunch of other places and says what to take and not take out of other documents but that your your mechanism of communicating to others about your expectations is clear right yeah and we're trying to write that down for uh enterprise use it's, it's one thing for us to put it in a document and stick a miter label on it or some government label on it or, or whatever and share it. Um, it's a message certainly comes across much nicer if it has a ITF uh, a label on it. And, and I think the, all the, I think pretty much the hard work has been done by the working group already. It's just a matter of putting it all together into one place. So Vittorio, it sounded like you're thinking that um, 
if, if I read between the lines, it, it sounds like you're thinking that, well, those might be best practices most of the time, but some of the time, some of these other things are what's right in a particular situation. And so maybe you have some concerns that a, that, that 2.1 document might be too restrictive and then not allow people or cause confusion for people that are trying to do something and saying, well, I, 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 you want me to do X, but it's not in 2.1. So why are you suggesting I do that? So I want to point out, um, not to jump on Vittorio here, but I want to point out that anything we do with a 2.1 does not delete 2.0 as an option, either from the marketplace or from the standards world. Yeah. Um, so to me, that is the obvious answer is you want to do something that is allowed in 2.0 and not in 2.1. Well, say you're doing 2.0 and not 2.1. Yeah, but I think part of yeah, you know, and I'm reading between the lines of what Vittorio is saying is that it causes confusion, similar confusion on the click that, that the 2.1 solves by saying, well, here's what to do. But then there's confusion to other people where if Vittorio is saying, well, go ahead and do this. And then he's arguing with customers and saying, but but that's not in 2.1. But I'm going to let Vittorio chime in here now. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, I think that the, the main thing that I'm concerned about is uh, the uh, is the work. Let's say that uh, to me the the bar for uh, changing the core. And I know that uh, it's version, so one might say I'm sticking to the to, top. To, but uh, yeah, in my experience, in reality, it usually doesn't work. Let's say that especially people that don't really know about the space, they'll just go for the latest because like that's uh, the safe way of uh, thinking about it. So we'll have a discussion anyway. But to me, the main challenge is uh, I suspect that uh, we'd get uh, a similar effect if we, we'd just have to say, help people to uh, navigate the various options. And I think that uh, a lot of the work that has been done for uh, security and for enterprise are for uh, fleshing out uh, specific cases that are very important. But uh, bringing this back to the core would be shoving down the throat of everyone the characteristics of those cases. Personally, I'm partial to the enterprise cases, so it would work well for me. But I don't know if it would be serving well the community by, uh, I'd say, generalizing those particular cases to everyone. And the other challenge that I have is that uh, um, it's mostly that uh, this will take a lot of work for uh, basically somehow uh, redoing things that we have already done rather than working on new stuff. Like, uh, in the end, everyone has a somewhat limited bandwidth. And so given that we already, like if we have a goal of uh, uh, helping people to adopt the, uh, the specific things that we did for BCP and others, it looks like this idea of a hitchhiker guide to the specs might achieve that without uh, all the work that instead we would have uh, that would go into creating a new version of the core. It's mostly the uh, it's mostly the amount of work that concerns me. I want to touch on something you said there, which was um, that, like I I absolutely agree that I don't want to force the sort of like enterprise stuff down the throats of everybody else, because uh, I also have uh, you know I also use the OAuth framework for things that are completely not enterprisey and. Uh, you know, very small implementations that I use myself, for example. Um, so, yeah, I have no interest in like forcing everybody to use JSON web token for access tokens, for example, because that's not relevant to um, a situation when there's a small authorization server plus resource server built into the same system. Um, so those specifics, I think we can leave the specifics of that up to like when we actually would start this work because um, that's, you know, just a matter of documenting what goes where, but I think overall, yeah, I agree with the goal that we're not, I don't want to try to, I don't want to make things more burdensome for people who don't need to implement something because it's not relevant to their implementation. If that makes sense. I think it's going to be those types of specifics, though, that that become difficult to reach agreement on when we actually get into the work. If we were trying to do something like a 2.1, where you could say what, what's been expressed by someone, where you could stamp it as 2.1 compliant and some sort of 
perceived guaranteed interoperability about that. I, I think those specifics will actually turn out to be very, very difficult to come to agreement on. And I, I guess I would echo what Torio said about, you know, what what's maybe most useful, at least bang for the buck, would be some sort of guide to the existing standards and, uh, you know, helping people find them, helping them know if they're relevant to their needs or not, rather than trying to roll it all up into a single, um, you know, super 2.1 profile, but just laying out things like, oh, Pixie exists and here's how it's useful and, and here's a pointer to it. Some some sort of like um, entry point or starting point to the existing set of specifications that would that would help somebody navigate them and understand what they need to do and why. Um, it, it may not achieve all the ends that, that people are looking for here, but I, I think it might be the most obtainable um, output work and one that has the most value relative to the, the amount of work that would be required to go into it. Something to think about. I think you're, you're talking about two different um, types of documents. Because that's, that, to me, sounds more like an umbrella document that explains the award in the world. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think I think there's a lot of people that have different ideas here about what the output of this work would be. And I'm, I guess I'm just suggesting that some kind of umbrella document like that might um, be more achievable and more value relative to the amount of work that takes to do it than actually trying to nail down a, a 2.1. I, I know that doesn't meet your need of or your desire of sort of obsoleting the BCP, but um, I have a sneaking suspicion that trying to actually get to that point may prove to be um, more difficult or even impossible than, than it seems like at the outside of conversations like this. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be easy. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> I think we do is gonna be easy. And once we open that that that, uh, that box for a new version of the BCP, a uh, new RFC, um, a lot of uh, desire will, will pop up. Uh, but I would intentionally keep, um, First of all, I would differentiate different types of documents. So um, my, my first goal is to really clean up the, the confusion that might might be caused by the fact that the RFC and then and the BCP um, state different things. Um, what, what, and I would, would be really object against um, writing a 2.1 it incorporates a lot of um, extension modules, for example, JWT and so on. Why would I object? From my perspective, the way um, the um, OAuth space is is, uh, is is designed with the core and the different extension modules, for me, works perfectly. Um, OAuth is, is very flexible when it comes to implementation because we focus on only getting the stuff in the RFC that is required for interoperability from a client to AS perspective. Perfect. Um, under the hood, you can have tremendously different implementations and would really object against um, uh, 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 limiting that flexibility. Um, so I, I'm not looking for a 2.1 that really incorporates all those different bits and pieces because they have they all are required in, in different circumstances. And um, regarding interoperability, um, RFC 6749 is, 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 is not really um, interoperable on a, on, a, on, a, on a bit level. Um, with the things that we have specified in the security BCP, become, we, get, we are getting a bit closer to interoperability because we, for example, um, have a more precise rules around redirect UI matching, which was impossible to implement uh, in an interoperable profession uh, uh, previously. So a bit of interoperability is possible from my perspective, but I would like to keep the, the scope of a potential uh, 2.1 narrow. I wouldn't really go far beyond the scope of the current RFC. That's my point on it. Thanks, I agree with that. And I think that also, uh addresses some of the concerns I'm hearing from others as well, because yeah, we, the flexibility is good. 
in that it lets people build, uh, you know, repurpose it for different things in, in interesting ways and build onto it. Um, but there's just, there's too much flexibility in the core. And, and I think the security BCP gets it right where there's flexibility in the right places, but still locks down enough of the sort of basic stuff to make it secure. Quick question to Justin, just a follow up on, on you. So, would a, would a guide, a hitchhiker guide kind of a solution address your, your need or do you think a 2.1 is really needed? Um, I think I, I, I stated the, 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 the problem I, I, I have with any kind of guide. I mean, the security BCP itself is a guide. And people just don't find it. They don't know it exists. That's my basic yeah. and fundamental problem. And the second thing is, even if they know it exists, they potentially don't understand what the relationship is between RFC 6749 and the security PCP. And uh, they potentially don't understand the felt um, conflicts between uh, those documents. So that's why I want to want to clean it up. Uh, and by the way, you're, you're really not really loud. So can you speak up a bit? Oh, sorry, is that, is that better? Yeah, much better. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, so, but wouldn't the the guide guides role I mean, versus two dot one? Wouldn't that guide explain the um, the missing part that you're you're missing and then point to the right places? Or do you think that the label two dot one is is really critical? I don't know whether the, the label 2.1 is critical. Um, I think I, 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 I stated that in the beginning. Um, what I would like to achieve is that if someone looks up OAuth and lands at, um, at RFC 6749, there should be a <laughs> something telling uh, this person, hey, here's something you take to, you, you need to take into consideration. Could be another RFC, could be, could be a link to the security BCP. I'm, I'm really open, right? Um, Deep in, if within within <laughs> within my heart, I feel I would like to clean up the mess, right? And that's why I think a RFC, a new RFC, a two dot one would be the best way to go. Because if I only have one document, I do not need to explain the difference between two documents. I would I would like to point out one of the other concerns I have about any sort of um, guide is that it looks it looks optional and it looks informal. And I'm even seeing this with the security BCP right now, which is that people look at it and then they say, oh, well, it's just a BCP, so I don't have to do it. And then they like ignore significant parts of it. When in reality, the message we're trying to send with that is this is the way it should be done now. And you should be starting here, right? So people just sort of ignore it because they think it's optional because it's you know just a BCP. But doesn't this uh, contrast with what we said earlier in which uh, we said that there are situations in which uh, Things that we would put in these idea things do, do not apply to everyone. Well, I would hope that we wouldn't put those kinds of things into the core, right? But isn't the BCP in itself something in which we say, okay, the, this one uh, would be the ideal situation, but uh, like if there is someone that have, a, a, like, a, unless we that... really want to override the core, as in we are saying, uh, okay, now we would like everyone to do uh, what the BCP does. Uh, in all cases, in all scenarios, regardless of uh, their particular scenario, then uh, it seems that uh, that would be uh, forcing that on them. I think that's yeah. the difference between a should and a must in the BCP, though. I'm sorry, say again? I think that's the difference between a should and a must in the BCP. Something in the BCP that says must really does mean you have to do it this way and something that could be optional is should and there's both of those in the document right now right so the, i think the difference is that uh, if uh, uh, like putting a must in the bcp or putting a must in the core the the kind of discussion that occurs i would expect it to be different let's say that, uh, that the bcp has uh, this kind of flexibility whereas uh, if instead you bring it back to the core then it's a true must then at that point, uh, uh, I think that the number of the things that we have in the BCP might end up being uh, rediscussed. So, am I misunderstanding the the purpose of a BCP then? Because 
I, I thought this was meant to be, this is what OAuth 2.0 should be now. And this is a mechanism to accomplish that in, that, in this document format is, is how we accomplish that. And, and we really are saying, if there's a must in here, it's, it's equivalent to a must in the core, assuming you're following both documents. That's, that's also my perception. And I, I'm remembering the discussions we had around some of the um, statements in the BCP. And we had, we had longer and harder discussions than I can remember when we did RFC 6749. So from the working group's behavior, I would deduce everybody was assuming, hey, we are updating the RFC. Um, I remember uh, side conversations in which uh, uh, some of the conclusions were, hey, it's just the BCP. So uh, I assumed that uh, some of these mindset was also transferred in there. That doesn't mean that uh, we were, uh, I would say, uh, lighthearted when we discussed those things. But I think that uh, uh, given that uh, there is a mechanism for actually updating the RFCs, and given that we didn't use that mechanism, but we did the BCP, my uh, understanding was that the BCP is a different type of document than the core in itself. Then I'm sure that everyone has a different perception uh, on this. And also, I remember that uh, there were discussions about uh, like the deprecation of ROPG and uh, things like people were saying, yeah, it's okay to do it in the BCP because we are not really uh, doing this in the core. So I think there might be some, uh, some clarification to be made here, not just among ourselves, but also for the community, as in what the BCP means. I mean, in the end, I would not assume that everyone that is in, this, in the security BCP would, all, would automatically go into an RFC. We would go through the, the whole um, working group process um, again, so we could have all the discussions that are uh, needed. Just having said that, um, in the beginning, the uh, security BCP uh, didn't have the objective that it ended up having now. Um, there is a reason why this document still uh, is titled security topics and not security BCP. Because when we started in 2015, it was exactly that, a laundry list of things that we need to, to cope with. And we already at that time had a discussion whether we should update the RFC or do a BCP and then over time, uh, this thing evolved into a BCP. So there is a lot of history um, that one need to take into consideration to understand why we came up with the BCP and not an update of the RC. It was just a decision in the process. Uh, and it doesn't mean that we can't um, reconsider uh, what we have decided uh, two or three years ago. And uh, we can absolutely reconsider. Again, the main thing that uh, I'm uh, concerned about is uh, the amount of work that it will require. And uh, like I keep hearing people uh, saying uh, uh, that the big problem is uh, discoverability. And uh, I really think that uh, by embedding references in the core and language that says uh, you've got to read that uh, uh, these other things uh, might actually solve the discoverability problem. And there might still, uh, like, of course, there will be more confusion than if we'd actually hone down a document and uh, selectively bring things in and have a new version of the core. I just don't know if uh, the extra that you'd obtain by doing that is uh, justified versus instead just having pointers from the FC to the, to the other docs. But I think this goes back to what I was saying earlier, which is that there's more than one problem and the discoverability is one problem, but I think there's other problems as well that are not solved by just these, these pointers. Yeah, well, it sounds like one of the problems that I've heard a couple of people say is having a crisp of saying, you know, here's what we want to have built for us, or, you know, here's what I want to buy. And someone else being able to say, well, here's what I deliver. And, and in a way that clearly communicates what's happening as opposed to what's, what's there now. Aaron, I was wondering whether sort of a wrapper document that maybe if it's called, say it's called 2.1, but doesn't, you know, replicate much if any text but really you know in the 6749 it would be pointed to and this new rfc would say here is 2.1 which is these parts of 6749 these best practices this and this and this and so it's more of a collection of where all to go as a starting point that's called 2.1 that everybody can reference to but that we're not 
We're not making any new decisions. We're just capturing the decisions we've already made um, with a crisp label. Yeah, that's definitely something that is an option. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not necessarily going into this with a goal of any particular uh, end format. Um, but I do want to settle on like what are the problems that we would be addressing with whatever format that would take. And I think you've just described a totally valid option as you know a, a format something that the like the important thing is that uh, I, th I think the two key problems that we're we're consolidating on are discoverability and um, the definition of uh, functionality, right? So having a label that describes a set of functionality. So Aaron, I'm, I'm wondering, um, what is your impression? Um, do people find it easy to kind of combine all these mechanisms when they implement stuff? Because I think, so currently you have to read 6749 and then you have to keep in mind that you have to add those pixel parameters and the checks in the right places. And then you might want to add MTLS. So you have to take care of that. Um, so it might be useful if we had one document that kind of explains all the things in one place, or let's say all the important things at least. Yeah, definitely. Cause it's, you know, this is, this is the discoverability problem of, um, it's not even clear what you have to read in order to know the whole thing that you're going to be building when you just start at the beginning. Yeah, I'm not so much talking about discoverability here, but more like, let's call it composability. So um, there might be challenging challenges um, when you have to compo compose all these mechanisms. Um, because, so first of all, you have to remind what to, what to do at each point in the protocol. Um, and then there might be some behaviors that you have to take care of that only come into play when you have a certain extension um, in your implementation. No, it's, 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 it's a really good point. Like, I think about it, for example, MTLS, super useful, uh, necessary for certain scenarios, probably not part of the core. So if you have a nice discoverable guide uh, aggregator, like I, I like the thing that uh, um, Dick said, but like adding on top of it, like uh, this uh, aspect of uh, those are the other specs that are relevant for this particular scenario and those are the parts that you'd want to do. That's something useful, but not necessarily something that is uh, actually core. So I, I don't know how it would be positioned or labeled. My question is how many different things would we have to label? It sounds like they're different for different use cases. There are different sort of uh, um, features that you want to use. Like how many of those are we talking about? Like it, it sounds that, that there's more than one label. So it sounds, so one of the things that it seems like there's a bunch of concerns around what the document might be we're coming up on time, what might be useful would be to have sort of a, a, a rough draft of what the document could be. So we have a clear topic of what we like and don't like, what we think works and doesn't work about something. There's an awful lot of theory about what is the document at this point in time. I, I would go uh, one step uh, further. I mean, we are at least talking about two different documents and I strongly agree with Vittorio. Um, I wouldn't really uh, conflate an updated core or whatever with this kind of umbrella document that gives you an overview on all the bits and pieces that you could use for the various use cases. Why wouldn't you want to reference though as in sort of a, I mean, I'm envisioning an umbrella document that references things and says, here's what you do. And if you have some other situations, here's other things to look at, right? So that somebody has a place to start. I think that's, I see what Torsten's saying, though, is that these fine. are two different. They are, they are two different things. An updated core is taking just the pieces yeah, of the existing core. The, the, uh, yeah. So um, the, the, this embedded document is kind of a meta BCP, right? Uh, you're not only describing uh, best practice for a certain use case, but you would also have some conditions. If you want to do that, you want to do that. That's more like a, like writing a, a, a blog post or writing a book about OAuth 
we're given an architectural overview. That's fine. Having that, that's really fine. It could be useful, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to 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 uh, to clean up the, the the core spec and to align it, realign it with the changes that we agreed on in the security PCP to make people's life easier with the core. So both can both can 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 go so side by side, but I would yeah. not like to conflate those. Okay, well that sort of highlights my my comment, which is having some rough draft of something makes it crisp to all of us what what it is and what it isn't. And there may be two documents. I agree. Well, Dick, uh, you are the um, sort of the author of the original uh, OWAS document, and, and maybe uh, it would be on you to maybe make a proposal if you have time uh, on how such a rough draft looks like based on the discussion. So, because um, we in any case have to confirm decisions on the mailing list as as you all know and so it would be a little bit more um, visible on where this could be heading right um i can take uh i can take a stab at a draft maybe i can work with torsten on that too i don't know if dick wants to volunteer himself for that but um i'm i'm happy to and i think the first draft would be starting from 6749 and essentially applying the diffs in the security bcp to it that's the what that's what i would um do as a first draft if that sounds reasonable uh to you torsten at least well it's in, in general it's practice to have the particularly since dick is, is still around to have actually him as the original author um to to make a proposal is that sure. um, the case i, I, I don't want to I, I don't hear think him. That that's actually true. Um, I've seen plenty of instances where um, sort of the update and the MIS document and whatever are done by different authors for lots of different reasons. I'm not saying Dick shouldn't do it, but I'm saying that um, painting this as the traditional way to approach it is uh, misleading. Dick, do you want to do it? I'm, I, I'd be happy and thrilled to work with Torsten and Aaron Arn pulling together a draft. And then we could post that to the mail list and have a conversation on the list that people could talk about what they think works and doesn't work. Assuming Aaron and Torsten are okay working with me. Absolutely. I just didn't want to, uh, you to feel like you were getting forced into this. <laughs> yeah, let, let's do it. And, yeah. we, we, and we have a slot on this on, in Vancouver, so. And, and, and of course, uh, Rifat and I are always happy if uh, you guys do some work. Um, so that's that's uh, excellent. Um, and we'll obviously have to hash out the details and get an agreement. Uh, one question that we at some point in time uh, then need to make on is um, whether this would be uh, sort of like in a classical uh, form of update, um, this would be just a new RFC that says this is the new version of OA 0 or whether that's uh, that would be a BIS version, or whether that would be indeed uh, a bump in the version number, which, in funny enough, we actually don't have version numbers. So, <laughs> um, can you can you please? Uh, I mean, we've got um, four four uh, more minutes left. So, can you please explain? In, in a few sentences, what the difference is between those options? Uh, the difference, the difference is in in doing a BIS version is you are removing functionality, uh, but you essentially keep the um, the backwards compatibility, in some sense. Okay, so we we can uh, we can decide what what which way to go after we have decided what should be in the new version. Exactly. Exactly. Good. Good. Got it. Thank you. Well, that, that was a useful discussion. I took some notes, um, unfortunately, on paper because uh, I don't like the typing while I'm, while everyone is talking. And so we'll uh, transcribe them. I, I enabled a recording if you've, uh, and hopefully that worked. And so uh, we can share that with the rest of the group because I see a couple of the folks who are missing. Um, so I, I envision, uh, of course, as always, a lively mailing list discussion on any of those topics. So. 
but uh, I, I would like to thank you guys again for joining and uh, for sharing your thoughts on this, uh, I believe, interesting topic. Thanks, Do you Mark. have a anything else? Uh, some famous last words, Rifat? No, no, that, that's good. I think uh, it's a good, good uh, discussion for sure. Just the beginning here, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thank Bye you. Guys. Thanks. Thank you.